Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, let's take a look into steps to create and use Spring Data JP repository. Well, in order to create Spring Data repository in our Spring Boot project, we typically follow these steps. Well, first we create a repository interface which extends JP repository interface. Next, we basically add custom query methods or finder methods to the created repository interface. Well, basically this is the optional step. If we want, we can add a query methods or finder methods to the repository interface. Well, third step is inject the created repository interface to another component and use the implementation that is provided automatically by Spring Data JPA. Let's go through these steps in detail. Well, in order to create a repository interface, we basically create an interface, for example, product repository, which extends JP repository interface. And JP repository interface basically takes two arguments. First is the JP entity name and second is the primary key type. Well, consider we have product JP entity in our Spring Boot application and we want to create Spring Data JP repository for product JP entity. Well, we basically create an interface like this product repository which extends JP repository and we pass JP entity name and the primary key type. Well, primary key type here is for example, look at here product JP entity has ID of type integer. So this is the integer basically we pass as a second argument to the JP repository. Okay, so JP repository basically is a generic. So we have to pass a wrapper class as an argument. All right, this is how we basically create a repository interface and get all the crude methods that is provided by Spring Data JPA. Well, we can also add a custom query methods or finder methods to the repository interface. For example, find by name is the query method or the finder method. Well, we'll learn more about query method or a finder method in the upcoming lectures. So this is basically an optional step. If you want, you can create a query method or finder method as per our requirement. Well, next is how to use this created repository interface in our project. Well, we simply inject this repository interface. For example, look at here, product repository. We are using at autoid annotation to inject product repository and we are calling repository methods. For example, save method, save all, find all, find by ID. All right. So simply we use at autoid annotation to auto wire you know repository interface and we call its methods okay so you can inject a repository interface in a service layer components or controller layer components or JUnit classes now let's go ahead and let's create a product repository in our spring boot application well let's head over to the IntelliJ idea and let's go to repository package over here right click new and then choose java class and choose interface and just go ahead and give interface name as product repository. All right, make sure that this should be an interface. And next, we need to extend this interface with JPA repository interface. And look at here, JPA repository interface takes two arguments. First is the type of the entity. Second is the type of the primary key. And this JPA repository interface should be from this package that is org spring framework dot data dot jpa dot repository package and just pass post argument as you know type of the entity in our case product jp entity and second long as you know primary key data type for instance if you can go ahead and open product jp entity you can able to see id has of type long right so this is long and this long we are simply passing to the jp repository as a second argument all right now one more important point here is we don't have to annotate this repository interface with at repository annotation here because as we know that simple jp repository is the implementation class of jp repository interface right so let me quickly open simple jp repository class over here so this simple jp repository class is from spring data jpa library and simple jp repository class it internally you know annotated with at repository annotation that's the reason we don't have to again annotate this interface with at repository annotation okay just remember this point
all right perfect now we have created product repository interface which extends jp repository interface and simple jp repository class which implements jp repository interface and its methods so we don't have to write any implementation class to implement this interface once this product repository interface extends jp repository interface then this product repository interface gets all the methods to perform code operations on product jp entity all right great well let me recap what we have done in this lecture well we understood the steps that we need to you know use to create and use spring data jp repositories and we have also created a product repository in our spring boot application in next lecture onwards we will deep dive into understanding all the important methods of a repository interfaces all right i will see you in next lecture